Welcome to graphing and writing in point slope form. Here we're going to learn another method of graphing these lines, and I'm sure you're tired of all these different methods. But the good news is, is that this is the last method that we're going to learn on how to graph. So let's get started. Point slope form. Here's what it looks like. Y minus Y1 equals M times X minus X1, where M is our slope, as it always has been, and X and Y is a point on the line. Now you see I have X and Y, not X1, Y1, because in some cases you know that we don't always have just one X and one Y. Sometimes we have multiple pairs of points. So that X and that Y is just any point on the line. But you'll notice something about that point slope form. It's there's this y minus y1 and it's x minus x1. So whatever this point is here, whenever you put it into point slope form, it's going to actually be the opposite that you see. So for example, if we had 2 negative 3, if I were to point that into put that into point slope form, these would actually change signs. We're going to look at that here. So, graphing. Graphing in point slope form is pretty easy. It's similar to slope intercept form. We find one point that's on the line and we use the slope to plot the rest. So we know what our slope is. It's always right here. It's always outside that parentheses with your x. So our slope is 1 half. Now we need to find that point on the line. We're going to look at this y minus 4 and this x plus 2. So we know that that point on the line is going to be the opposite. Now you have to be careful here. Think about it this way. y goes with y, x goes with x. The first number you run into when you read left to right isn't your x. It's what's over here in the parentheses. So it's x plus 2. So if it's a plus 2 in the equation, it's a minus 2 on the graph. Then we have our negative 4. That negative 4 becomes a positive 4. So we know that there's a point on the line at negative 2, 4. And we know that the slope is 1 half. So what we can do is we can plot that point, negative 2, 4, so negative 2, 4, there we go. And now we just get to use the slope, so we get to go rise 1, right 2, rise 1, right 2, and draw your line. There you go. That is graphing in point slope form. So let's do one more example together. We have y plus 1 equals negative 3 over 2 times x minus 4. So we look at our slope. It's the opposite of 3 over 2. And our point on the line, it says x minus 4. So we know it's the opposite of negative 4, so it's positive 4. y plus 1 is the opposite of positive 1, so negative 1. So I need to put a point at 4, negative 1. and then use my slope to plot two more points. So we're going to go down three, one, two, three, and right two. If I can count. And then we're going to go down three again, and right two more, and graph. So here are two problems for you to try on your own. So go ahead and pause the video and try these now. Okay, and here are the answers to those practice problems. So go ahead and pause the video again and check your work with mine. Then we'll go on and we'll talk about how to write in point slope form. Um, at the top here, let's just write again y minus y1 equals m times x minus 
x1 just to remind ourselves what it looks like. So, whenever we're writing and we have a point and a slope like we're given here, it's pretty easy. All we have to do is label x1, y1, and then you just substitute in. So y minus y1, which is 5, equals m, which is 3 over 4, x minus 3. And you'll see that if we were to go back, just like when we were graphing, this minus 5 is positive at the point. This negative 3 is positive in the point because we know that they are opposites. Now here we're given two points, and this is a little bit not really harder. It just takes a little bit more work. What we have to do is find the slope using our slope formula, so we take our x1, y1, x2, y2, y2 minus y1, which we now know turns into positive, and then x2 minus x1. And we get negative 2 over 3, so that's our slope. And we can pick and choose whatever we want to be our point that we use in our equation. It doesn't matter which one we pick, but we already have one labeled x1, y1, so why don't we use that? So y, and then it says negative 5, and we know it's the opposite, so that negative 5 becomes plus 5 equals negative 2 over 3, parentheses x minus 3. Now you get to try these on your own, so go ahead and pause the video and do that now. And here are the answers to those practice problems. Go ahead and check your work, and after you do that, you are done with this lesson.